Hey, what's up guys? So I recently built my new compact gaming and editing system in the NKSM1 and overall I'm pretty happy with how everything went. The system looks super clean. I even made some custom power cables for the GPU and they turned out pretty nice. There is one big problem though. So yeah, the 2080 Ti that I installed in there hits thermal throttling and running extremely loud. So today's objective is to try and fix that and hopefully get this little monster running cool and quiet. Now I know what many of you are thinking, of course a 2080 Ti is going to be scorching hot in a little hot box like that, what was I even expecting? Well to be honest I was a bit surprised, mainly because the NCASE M1 despite being a small form factor case does provide an exceptional amount of airflow and when looking at my previous data with the GTX 1080 Ti, GPU temps are barely warmer than running the card on an open test bench. The 2080 Ti is a different ball game though, since it's packing a 260 watt TDP it is dumping a ton of heat into that case. In its current state, this system is basically deafening when trying to play games, so if I'm not able to fix these thermals and noise levels today, then I'll likely be forced to move to another case. So before we desperately try to fix this, let's look at the baseline test to see what's actually going on here. So starting with GPU thermals, the 2080 Ti settles in at around 85 degrees C, but is peaking at as high as 86, and for reference, this card usually sits at around 75 degrees C on an open test bench. At this point, this card is surpassing the thermal limit of 84 degrees C as set by MSI Afterburner and if we look at the GPU clock speed we are bouncing all over the place. Here we're seeing the card swing between 1700 and 1900 megahertz which is going to cause some serious fluctuations in frame rate as well. We can confirm that the card is indeed throttling by looking at the GPU voltage here over time where the 2080 Ti is consistently dipping below 0.9 volts and trying to keep temperatures under control. So the first thing that I wanted to try and tweak were the bottom intake fans seeing as by default they were just running at around 650 rpm. In my previous testing I've seen these fans provide enough air to the GPU to reduce temperatures by a significant amount, so let's first get those running a bit faster. These two fans are plugged into a chassis fan header via a splitter cable as well, so by default they are controlled by CPU temperature not GPU temperature which would be ideal. To fix this I used a program called Speed Fan which allows you to access the fan controllers on your motherboard and essentially set up software control for different temperature readouts. In our case we need software control for these two bottom intake fans to respond to GPU temp via a fan curve. For those of you who want to use the software for your own systems I'll leave a link down below to a tutorial from Jay's Two Cents who covered this otherwise hard to use software really well. So now the bottom intake fans hit 1500 rpm when the GPU temps hit 75 degrees C and we do now see about a 2 degree drop with the 2080 Ti now sitting around 83 to 84. This means that it's just sitting on the edge of the 84 degree thermal limit and honestly it's not that much of a reduction from where we started. Clock speed is now a bit higher and more stable as well where instead of dips to 1700 megahertz we are staying at around 1800 which is still not ideal or best case scenario. Similar picture with the GPU voltage now too we can see that the 2080 Ti is not throttling anywhere near as hard as it was before but still there is a lot of work to be done. It's important to note that these tests were done with the side mounted radiator fans running as intake and not as exhaust. I've set the fans up this way because it provided the best CPU thermals in previous testing and so we are relying on passive exhaust throughout the top and back of the case which the NKSM1 typically does quite well. Since the 2080 Ti Founders Edition uses an open air cooler it exhausts all of the hot air out of the side of the card near the logo so I can understand how a lot of that hot air struggles to be exhausted from the case. So in my next test I swapped the CPU radiator fans to exhaust to see if this was the cause of the problem and we do get a small 1 degree reduction but we're still running quite hot. Although we're not throttling at this point and 82 degrees is honestly okay and safe, the 2080 Ti is still significantly warmer than what I'm happy with and it is incredibly loud as well. So then I thought maybe the problem was the bottom intake fans to begin with and that maybe the GPU would have actually been better without them installed despite this going against my previous testing with other GPUs but the 2080 Ti was back to exceeding our thermal limit, sitting at around 84 to 85 degrees C. 
One thing that is definitely worth noting here, despite the GPU now running hotter, is that it was running significantly quieter since the GPU fans weren't creating any turbulence against the bottom intake fans. So the bottom intake fans, they did need to go back in, and I decided next to try adding in a 92 mil rear exhaust fan to help get rid of all of that heat that the 2080 Ti was dumping in there. Do note that with a side mounted radiator, you'll barely be able to fit a 92 mil fan in the NK7 one, and I was only able to squeeze in the Noctua NFA9 by removing the anti vibration pads. Now running yet another thermal test, we do get another measurable reduction of 1 degree C from our previous best result, with the 2080 Ti now settling in at 81. So we're still running quite warm, but at least our core clock is now consistently above 1800 MHz. So we do have a thermal improvement, but at the cost of increased noise. While gaming, the system is definitely audible, and if I were to stream with the system this loud, you guys would easily be able to hear the noise through my mic. The fans that I'm running in there are the Noctua to an NFF12 Chromax fans, which do provide better than average noise performance for static pressure fans. They're not as good as the NFA 12 by 25s though, and I knew this when building the system, but I was really reluctant to use the NFA 12s because the all black NFF 12s just looked so good. So I did try swapping to the NFA 12s, and although this did improve noise levels a little, the system was still quite loud due to the GPU fans running so fast, and I didn't measure any thermal improvement at all by swapping to these fans and running them at the same RPM. So many hours later, we're just a few degrees cooler, which is great, but at the cost of the system being significantly louder than before. Not exactly a surprising trade-off, and I've certainly exhausted any possibility of squeezing any more airflow performance out of the Uncase M1. At this point, there was only one thing left to try, something that I wasn't even sure would even work, seeing as I had never done it previously for an NVIDIA GPU. And that was undervolting, something that I couldn't seem to do in EVGA's Precision X1 and XC software, but thankfully still works in the latest MSI Afterburner. To do this, you'll need to press Ctrl F to access the frequency and voltage curve, which we'll now be able to make adjustments to. Essentially what we're doing here is reducing the amount of voltage that is fed to the GPU while it's at full load, thereby decreasing power consumption and heat output. The first thing that you'll need to do here is decide on a target frequency that you'd like to run the GPU at. A reasonable target would be what the GPU would usually boost to without any thermal limitations, and for a 2080 Ti, Founders Edition, that's right around 1860 MHz. The next thing that you'll want to do whilst running a benchmark loop like Heaven 4.0 in the background is from right to left, drag each data point to match the target frequency on the Y axis. At first, it looks like we're giving the GPU several voltage options to run at for this target frequency, but the GPU will choose the leftmost data point to run at by default, which is the lowest voltage. 900 millivolts is a pretty safe spot for Turing and Pascal GPUs, and they should be able to run there whilst maintaining the stock boost clock no problem at all, but I'd recommend finding the lowest V core that your GPU is stable at for this clock speed. In my case, the 2080 Ti was stable at just 850 millivolts with a target clock speed of 1860 MHz, and this right here gave us the biggest thermal and noise improvement so far. Now we're seeing the 2080 Ti settle in at just 72 degrees C and never surpassing 73. Overall, that's around a 13 degree improvement from what we started with, and that's with a lower GPU fan speed as well. Not to mention a higher GPU clock speed too, seeing as the 2080 Ti is rock solid stable at 1860 MHz, both faster and more stable than our previous results. Taking a look at the GPU load voltage now, we can see why that is. Seeing as we've successfully pinned the 2080 Ti to just 850 50 millivolts, whereas before it would happily boost to 950 to 1000. It's important to note that although 850 millivolts was stable in Heaven 4.0, I did need to eventually bump this up to 875 millivolts to be stable in games, so just keep this in mind if you are going to be doing this for your own system. So overall, after undervolting the GPU and doing all the other tweaks beforehand, we've taken the 2080 Ti from a loud, annoying, and slow 85 to 86 degrees C to a cool, quiet, and faster 70 to 73 degrees at full load. This is a huge relief for me personally because honestly guys, before undervolting the GPU, I was not even sure if I could live with the 2080 Ti going that loud. I'd even go as far as saying to avoid two slot 2080 Ti's for the NK7 one unless you're prepared to undervolt it, otherwise get ready for a lot of noise and heat. Thankfully now my build is relatively quiet while gaming, still a little audible but at least now it's not screaming in pain like it was before. As I said, the 2080 Ti 
is a huge power hog and although Nvidia's reworked open air cooler does an extremely good job of handling that 260 watt TDP, all of that heat does need to be exhausted effectively. And although the system is relatively quiet now, I am curious about finally building a custom loop in this case to reduce thermals and noise levels even further. So I think that'll be the next step for the system after Computex. So feel free to try these tweaks on your own build if you find your GPU is running a bit hot. Don't forget to watch the build video of the system if you haven't already. Thank you all for watching as always, and I will see you all in the next one.